Joe Rogan hosts one of the largest podcasts in the world with an estimated 300 million monthly listeners. He's been very outspoken against circumcision in both his podcast and his stand-up shows. In a recent interview, Joe woke a clueless New York Times writer, Barry Weiss, to the insanity that is circumcision. Weiss opened up a can of foreskin in front of an audience of millions, and Rogan counted with a double leg takedown. I suppose only a New York Times writer would have the hubris to start talking disdainfully about something she admits she has no knowledge of. That's a risky move to try on the Joe Rogan experience. I'm Anthony Lasquadro. As the founder of Intaction, I'm here to educate and enlighten, but be forewarned, this shocking discussion might cause some to go into a meltdown because you can't handle the truth. But if you're ready, let's see what happened. This is the Circumcision Chronicles Uncut. in New Hampshire with Andrew Yang and the Yang Gang because I'm writing about him. Right. Against circumcision. He has like all these views about things. Against circumcision? You don't agree with that? Uh, no. Really? Yeah. No, You're I'm cutting not, baby dicks? I'm not like passionate about that. Are well, you? Yeah, people lose their dicks. A lot of kids every year. Do you know children die from that? Weiss is a millennial opinion editor for the New York Times. How ironic they call themselves the Times because their clock must have been broken when they said Hillary had a 91% chance of winning. We'll talk about statistics later. But Barry found it strange that Andrew Yang spoke out against circumcision. When Rogan questioned her, she basically said she supports circumcision. And then she slightly retreated by saying she's just not passionate about that. I suppose for her the controversy about circumcision is obscured in a moralistic blind spot because her genitals are intact and were never threatened. After all, her gender is protected against genital cutting. And for her, any conflicting thoughts that might try to reach the surface are probably quashed by dogmatic beliefs. It's disappointing to hear millennials so out of touch and apathetic, especially when a recent online poll of almost a million people had 57% against circumcision well, only 37% in favor and 5% undecided. Link in the description below. Well, let's see what they said next. They the lose their die. dicks? Yes, all the time. It's very common. Really? Yes. Like multiple children per year lose their penis from an unnecessary antiquated operation where you cut off their dicks to make it look different. Okay. You're cutting skin off of their dick, and they wind up getting infected, and they lose their dicks. It's, I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, uh -huh. but it happens enough time where you go, well, this should never happen. This is a completely unnecessary operation. Robert Baker oh, estimates like 229 deaths per year from circumcision in the United States. Bollinger estimates that apparently approximately 119 infant boys die from circumcision related each year in the U.S., 1.3% of all male neonatal deaths from all causes. There are several case reports of death in the medical literature. Rogan hits back with repeated statements that children die or lose their penis from circumcision. He cites Bollinger in Thymos Journal of Boyhood Studies that reported 117 babies die every year from circumcision. Link in the description below. That's not surprising considering over 1 million Delicate infant babies have their foreskins ripped off and crushed every year. What Rogan didn't mention was that a study published in the Societies of Pediatric Urology found an 11.5% serious complication rate. And another study in Denmark found a 26% meatal stenosis complication rate. Link also in the description below. That's when circumcision has caused so much damage it's difficult to urinate. Ask Jimmy Kimmel about that. Story link below. Even in the face of all these risks, some parents are still willing to roll the dice. But remember, if it happens to you or your son, then this statistic is 100%.
Let's see what they said next. Hey, if you're liking this video, please hit the like button down below. Make me smile by leaving a comment, Foreskin for the win, and subscribe to our channel too. Hit the notification bell because I have many more videos on the way. Also, follow the link in the description to find out more about Intaction and how you can participate with or support our nonprofit organization. We are one of the most passionate fighters of circumcision in America. Thank you, and back to the discussion. I cannot believe we're talking about this. We should be talking about it. Well, why not? Kids are dying. Like, it's like, how many of them have to die before we say this is a ancient, ridiculous ritual? It doesn't make any sense. Okay. I, I've seen the arguments for and against, like that it prevents STDs. Like, look, you know what pre prevents STDs? Condoms and abstinence. Mm -hmm. That's what prevents STDs. And and in some cases, vaccinations. Get the fuck out of here. You're cutting <laughs> baby dicks. It's It doesn't make any sense. I don't cut baby dicks. It's I can't believe we're talking about this, she says. It's like saying, I don't want to talk about this. This penis, circumcision, baby dick cutting talk. But that's what she means. Just keep on cutting baby dicks and let's not think about the hypocrisy. Yeah, don't cut baby dicks. If she was writing in the New York Times about Me Too, sexual abuse, or assault, the conversation would be sober and serious, as it should be. But when we talk about male genital mutilation, it's hard for her to even take it seriously. Weiss, like many people when confronted with, with this uncomfortable reality, their dissonance forces them to discard empathy for an innocent baby. Cognitive dissonance is the tension that arises in the mind from two conflicting beliefs. Um, circumcision harms babies, but I really like cutting baby dicks. People want to escape from thinking about how we cut baby dicks so nonchalantly in America. Okay, let's go to the next clip. It's not as disgusting as uh, what they do to women's clitorises in, in, in certain Well, that makes it Muslim impossible to, like, yes, to, have an to orgasm. orgasm. It's a different reason for doing it, but it's, you're, you're mutilating a kid. You're just doing it in a way that it's okay. Like, if you cut a piece of my earlobe off, I'm going to be all right. Joe and Barry seem to reach this consensus on female genital mutilation versus male genital mutilation, but unfortunately, here they both get it wrong. They both say that only FGM makes it impossible to have an orgasm. They are unaware there are four types of female genital mutilation. FGM is a spectrum of practices, some worse than others. It depends on tribe, geography, and culture. And there's also four types of male genital mutilation, partial, radical, subcision, and all of the types like dorsal cutting. And shocker, many Muslim and African women, like Fumbaye Amadou, claim FGM makes sex better. Before one dismisses her claims, check out her interview in the movie American Circumcision, linked down below in the description. And much of FGM in the Muslim world is done by doctors in hospitals. Another shocker, just like baby boys are cut in America. Also consider more males likely die from genital cutting as opposed to females, especially when you consider more males are cut and many tra African tribal initiates die from circumcision. Look, we shouldn't be having this contest to say which gender has the bloodiest end of the knife, males or females. What I say is all forced genital cutting is horrific, and that's what needs to end. Human genital cutting, all of it. I don't that's know. Really I'm from fake. a family of four daughters. I have not thought deeply about... I, I did not know that statistic yeah. until you put it up there. Not good. Yeah, most people don't know it. And I've talked to people who have had immediate family members who have had horrible illnesses or injuries from circumcision. It's mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah, don't cut baby dicks. Weiss, in a defensive move, says she doesn't know much about the issue because she comes from a family of four daughters. Like she's never seen a penis before. She hasn't seen a circumcision. She never attended a bris. How many babies has she heard screaming? Probably a lot. And earlier in the discussion, she knew about intactivists, which are people like me that advocate against circumcision. Only how, you're an intactivist. Is that what they're yes, called? Yes, whatever. Intactivist. That's a good way of putting mm -hmm. it. I've never heard that expression. Before. And now she acts like she knows nothing about the issue. Look, I don't want to be overly critical of Weiss, but because she's not alone. There are many Americans that believe that circumcision should not be discussed. 
that it's okay to cut baby dicks. Yeah, don't cut baby dicks. But that ain't happening. We have activists. Our job is to force people to rethink this issue. We salute Joe Rogan and Andrew Yang for their outspokenness. And until next time, I'm Anthony Lasquadro. Don't cut baby dicks. Don't cut baby dicks. Don't cut baby dicks. Get the fuck out of here. You're cutting baby dicks. It's, it doesn't make any sense.